Hey, it's about 6.30 in the morning on Sunday uh, here on Isla. And shortly we're going to be heading back to the mainland and be on my way to Edinburgh. And then from there go north to uh, the Highlands and Speyside. Um, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the rest of my whiskey journey. But I think I'm really, really going to miss this place. This place has been absolutely uh, unbelievable. Anyhow, hope to uh, share my next step in my journey with you soon. Slan For the three days I spent on Isla, the Beaumar house located in the town of Beaumar was my home. Oh, by the way, uh, Beaumar means the Big Bend uh, in Old Scottish Gaelic. It uh, is about two blocks down the road from the Beaumar distillery, and yet, oddly enough, Beaumar distillery was the one that we did not tour during our stay. So on the morning of our last day on the island, before we headed off to the mainland Scotland, uh, on our long drive back to Edinburgh, I decided to at least take a few pictures of the town and the distillery. The town of Beaumar is located on the southeastern shore of Loch Indal, and it serves as an administrative capital of the island. So Beaumar is sort of the center of Isla. All of the streets are aligned in a neat grid, and upon entry to the town, there is a very interesting round Church of Scotland, Killaro Parish Church. The round church was built in 1767, and it has been suggested that the circular design was intended to ensure that there are no corners in which the devil could hide. The Beaumont Distillery was established in 1779 by local merchant John P. Simpson, and today it is owned by Morrison Beaumont Distillers Limited, a holding company owned by Japanese drinks company Suntory. Morrison Beaumont also owns Akintoshin and Glengarry Distilleries and produced the uh, McClellan's single malt range of bottlings. And if, uh, and when, I should return to Isla, perhaps in the year 2020, I'll be sure to do a full tour and then provide a more thorough study of the distillery. After I took a few pictures of Beaumont Distillery, the Scottish Roots tour bus drove to Port Askig. Port Askig has a hotel, a petrol station, and shop next to the port, but has very few households. Port Askig is also the name of a Scotch whiskey range, bottled for Speciality Drinks Limited. The producing distillery is not officially identified. From Port Askig, we took a ferry back to the mainland of Scotland. Hours later. On our way back to Edinburgh, the Scottish Roots touring bus stopped for lunch at the village of Enavari, home of Enavari Castle. <laughs> So, after a quick bite, I did a tour of the castle. The foundation for the castle was laid in 1746, and it was built in the Gothic Revival style. Later additions included a third floor with dormer windows and steep canonical roofs. It is surrounded by a 16-acre or 6.5-hectare garden on an estate of about 60,000 acres. Inside the castle is a display of a collection of more than 1,300 pikes, muskets, swords, numerous paintings, and other weapons, as well as royal attire of previous generations of dukes. The 13th duke and his family live in private apartments occupying two floors and set between two of the castle's circular towers. After stopping in the village of Envare, we then headed on to Edinburgh, where I would pick up my rental car and begin my journey to the Highlands and Speyside, the following day. Previously in episodes 204, 205, 206, and 216, I reviewed four Beaumar distillery bottlings, the 12-year-old, the darkest, the 18-year-old, and the small batch bourbon cask. 
Thus far, I have yet to be impressed or excited about any official bottlings of their whiskeys. So, for this vlog, I have decided to review an independent bottling, the 1997 Beaumar 20-year-old Old Particular, a K&L exclusive single barrel cast strength single malt scotch. It is bottled at cast strength at 55.7% alcohol by volume, and it sells for about $150 US. Alrighty, so I really enjoyed my uh, time in Isla. I look forward to uh, going um, back. Um, they have uh, an event there, you may have heard of it, called Fish Eel, um, but I think I would prefer to go back um, warm weather when there's not a lot of uh, people there. Um, but an absolutely uh, dream place to uh, visit. Now, I did a live uncorking of this. This is a, an independent bottling from um, Douglas Lang. It's an old particular Beaumore 20 year old. I did a live um, uncorking of this. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, YouTube didn't save the video. Not sure when it went wrong. I've done many live videos. Never ever had this happen before. Um, but um, I have a Tried this more, let it open up more, got it down below the shoulder there. Um, had an opportunity to experience it at various temperatures. I like to try it in a cold glass, try a little bit of ice, uh, try adding more water to it. Uh, see um, the different flavors and aromas you can get out of it and trying it uh, different ways. Um, and I find um, I like it neat. It's not, even though it's at 57.2% uh, alcohol by volume, it's not a big punch in the face. It doesn't have a huge bite, uh, but it does open up a little bit more as you add just a little bit of water. But it also seems to me somewhat of a, um, a delicate whiskey that you could easily uh, drown it. All right, before I give you a nosing and tasting of it, I want to talk a little bit about independent bottlings. Um, I've not had a Bowmore that just wowed me, that I absolutely loved. Um, so the reason why I bought an independent bottling um, is to see if I can get a different uh, angle on it. This um, is an independent bottler which I've had before. I reviewed um, a Douglas Lang Highland Park, old particular, 20 year old. That one also, when I first opened it, didn't wow me. I wasn't overly impressed with it. But about a week later, it was almost as if it was a completely different whiskey. So uh, I do want to continue to try this um, and see how it continues to uh, evolve. Um, a little bit about independent bottlings. I don't have a ton of experience with independent bottlers. That's something I may do uh, in the future where I'll just do a long series of independent bottlings um, from various independent bottlers um, and try various uh, whiskeys. I have done some minis, um, but that's been about it. I haven't bought a whole lot of full bottles. Um, about this particular uh, independent bottling, I shared this during the live event, thought I'd share it again. So it was found in uh, 1948 after the Second World War. Fred Douglas Lang had served in the RAF, the Royal Air Force. Um, he's then later joined by his son, Fred Hamilton Lang in 1972, and then by his granddaughter uh, in 2013, Kara Lang. Um, so it's a third generation independent uh, bottler. So what they do is they buy quality cask and they bottle at cask strength, um, unchilled filtered and uh, no E150 color adding. Um, this says that this is one of uh, 256 bottles um, charged from a refilled hogshead um, and then they give you a reference number. You can look it up and finally get more information on it. This is DL12122. Uh, and this is bottled specifically or especially for KL Wines. KL Wines, this is not an advertisement. KL Wines, they have um, a store in San Francisco, in Redwood City, California, and in uh, Los Angeles. The single cash was distilled in March 1997 and was bottled in September. 2017. All right, on the nose. Light um, tree fruit, pear, yellow apple, maybe a little bit of white peach, medium minus intensity of smoke, so it's not a heavily peated a whiskey. A little bit of salty sea breeze, do get that um, slight uh, sea breeze air character. 
slight vegetal note, some greenness to it, and some citrus. I'm getting both lemon and uh, grapefruit, like a white grapefruit. I don't get that too often in uh, scotches. So it's almost like a grilled lemon and grilled uh, grapefruit. On the back end, I get a nice waft of uh, smoke and uh, hints of chocolate. So, all right, so overall, it's a medium to medium minus intensity of aromas. All right, on the palate. It has a real nice development, a nice evolution, so that you get something different in the front, middle, and finish. Do get sort of these grilled um, grapefruit, apple, pear, and, and uh, lemon. This is probably the most citrus uh, forward whiskey I've ever had. Then these nice chocolate and uh, smoke uh, elements come in. A little bit of uh, nuttiness. Along with some white peach and um, apple. This is a seemingly delicate whiskey. Um, it's not super strong. I actually liked it on the colder side with some ice. So if you were looking for a whiskey to have um, during uh, the summertime, um, almost kind of like the way you would have a, a white wine, this would serve that same sort of uh, flavor uh, profile. Really, really, really nice. Um, Score-wise, I'm going to give this uh, 89 points. I paid $146 for this. Not an inexpensive wine. The Highland Park Douglas Lang, I paid $200 uh, for this. Um, is it worth the $146? At this point, I don't think so. I think it's about $50 uh, overpriced. I would take this down to about uh, 100 bucks. What other whiskeys is, is this like? It reminds me of, I would say, other boomers, uh, maybe like the 12 year old, um, but with a little bit more body, uh, a little bit more weight, uh, and more viscosity. Um, and I had mentioned before, I am now also getting a little bit of vanilla as well. And a creaminess to it um, on, on the finish, which is, which is nice. All right, so that's it for uh, this uh, study, for this uh, review. After this, we are heading back to the mainland, and we're going to head up to um, uh, the Highlands and Speyside. Look forward to doing that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little photos. I took a lot more photos than what I shared in this video of uh, the castle. There is a lot more to see in Scotland other than uh, distilleries, um, but I don't necessarily think I want to share it all. Uh, in uh, whiskey videos, uh, but if you're planning a trip to Scotland, you know, I was cramming in 20 distilleries within two weeks, which is quite a bit. Um, there are a lot of other things to see, uh, old ruins, um, ch old, old, more old uh, churches. Um, there's these uh, standing stones, which I watched some documentaries on. So I'm planning on going back, um, tentatively going back to Scotland in July 2019. I'm going to do a little bit more studying there and hopefully visit another uh, 20 distillery. So if that works out, I probably will take a few more stops along the way and take some more photos and video of the countryside and other things to see other than uh, the distilleries. All right, that's it for this uh, video. Until next time. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like my videos and give it a thumbs up and Ring the bell so when you'll be notified when I post something new or go live. All right, until next time, cheers. If you have benefited from my wine or whiskey studies and you wish to support this ongoing work, I ask that you become a Patreon supporter. The link to my Patreon account is in the description box below.